Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another film. So if you watched my last film, you will have heard me mention that um, I was coming to Switzerland. And as you can see, that's exactly where I am this morning. And the range behind me is the Eiger range with the, with the early morning light hitting the peaks. It's the first time I've seen it for a couple of days. Um, since we've been here, the, um, the clouds have been just hiding the, um, the summits for the most part, and we just keep getting little, little teasing views of the tops. Um, we're camped just about um, a mile from where I'm standing, and I've just decided to have a walk down this little track this morning. There was a promise of some low cloud, and I did think that that would be hanging in the valleys, but as you can see, there isn't any cloud whatsoever, but um, it's a beautiful place for a walk. The temperature right now is really, really comfortable. During the daytime, it's been getting up to 30 degrees and I just cannot photograph in that. So I'm out for a couple of hours this morning to see what I can find. Um, in terms of subject matter, I'm really not um, looking for anything particular. The big vistas are not something I'm expecting to, to shoot while I'm here. I didn't come um, to Switzerland on a photographic trip, it's just literally a holiday, but I, I always carry the kit with me wherever I go just in case there's anything worthwhile when I get here. So I've nothing planned in terms of big landscapes, it is literally just um, have a walk around and see what I can photograph. But this morning I've got a couple of hours before it gets um, too hot. And, um, but I'm just going to take in this view because it's absolutely stunning. So I'll see you in just a few minutes. So I've just stopped very, very briefly just to try and illustrate the sort of things that's catching my eye this morning. Um, I'm in a very, very different environment to what you normally see me in. Um, but if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I, I just love the smaller scenes. Um, you've seen me do lots of macro, and that translates through to, to bigger vistas in terms of looking for smaller sections of them. And what's caught my eye here as I've just been walking along the path is the tree line in the distance. I'm gonna put a little crop box on in just a second so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. But I love the way that you've got um, the ridge lines of the mountains receding into the distance and how they contrast well with the tops of the pine trees. The crop that I'm looking for doesn't include the mountain tops, I'll put the crop box on now. It's more in keeping with just, just looking at that smaller scene uh, um, within the trees and the background. Um, my lens at the moment is quite wide because I want to encompass as much um, as possible um, from left to right of frame, but I am going to take off the tops of the mountains. Now, there's some lovely shades and tones in the, in the shot. I've used, I'm using my case 0.6 neutral density graduated filter just to hold back um, the brighter portions of the scene and just angling it ever so slightly just to follow the ridge line. Um, and that really makes the whole thing pop beautifully. Settings uh, f16, a quarter of a second at 100 ISO. I've got the mirror locked up and a two second timer on and uh, I shall put that on now. So just a quick one, um, because I haven't got a lot of time this morning, I'm not 100% convinced or sure that I will conclude the video in the time that I've, that I've allocated myself, certainly before it gets too hot. Ordinarily, I'd come out for a half a day um, minimum, um, ideally a full day in order to find the images for the videos. Because this time window is very, very limited, I'm not uh, at all sure that I will, I will find the images um, that, I, that I like to produce for my films. So there's every chance that this film may run on into different days and I just thought I would get that out there now just in case um, you, f you find that the video is, is sort of jumping around. That that's um, my intention is not to produce an entire film this morning. Um, if I find the images, that's fantastic, but I'm not going to force them. I would rather them rather that they came naturally and, um, and I don't feel like I'm just cramming images on for the sake of it. So 
Um, I'm going to continue my walk. I've not got a huge amount of time left, but if we find something fantastic, if we don't, like I said, this film will roll on to another day. So let's see. I'd done this walk not 24 hours before during a period of low cloud and what a difference a day makes as you can see by this following photo taken on my iPhone. So I thought I'd try something just a little bit um, different for me and it's a sort of, I suppose it is, ICM. Conventionally with ICM what I've seen, um, I'm not um, let's say an expert on ICM, is the camera moving up and down, side to side or around and you often see people doing a flick when they're doing the, the shots and it's, it's often done with landscape photography. And I just thought I'd give it a go with some, some of these wildflowers here. We've got um, oxide daisies predominantly is what I'm focusing on. But there's also a type of herbell here as well, um, some sort of bellflower. And um, the yellows that you see are um, hawk bits. And there's also what looks like a smooth south thistle there as well. Um, bits of yellow rattle, all sorts of things in amongst this grassland. Um, what I'm trying to do for my technique is I'm pre-focusing on a, an area where the daisies are most dense I'm coming out and I'm moving in and stopping at roughly that point and I'm getting some really interesting effects and what I have tried as well to, to add to that is as I'm moving in I've been moving the camera from side to side sort of a wiggle like a snake effect and then I've also tried doing a circular motion so lots of different um, results from this um, which I'm really quite liking the looks of and it's um, every one is completely different to the next I'm using my 100mm macro lens I'm on aperture priority because I just don't want to be um, messing around with the exposure too much f22 and an eighth of a second at 100 ISO I've got um, a bit of exposure compensation dialed in just to make sure that those whites um, stay where they need to be and not overexposed. During a longish exposure of 0.8 of a second, they can quite easily burn out. So I've just underexposed ever so slightly, like I say, just to make sure that they stay um, the, in terms of the exposed the, the, where they need to be. But a really interesting effect, even though you do look a bit odd when you're doing it. So I'll put the best um, of the image is on probably just one probably but I'll put the best on now Well, I hope you liked that last image, um, certainly looked really nice on the back of the camera, reminded me almost of a painting and I hope that really comes through on the final film. So you catch up with me on a completely different day, um, since you last saw me as I suspected it got really hot, um, temperatures getting up for 30 degrees, much like I think we're experiencing in the UK at the moment and uh, just, I just couldn't work in those temperatures so I had a couple of days off and then we headed over the Grimsel Pass, which if you've never heard of it or done it, um, it's well worth seeing or doing. It's um, very scary, um, steep drops at the side of the road, 
um, twisty bends and lots of uh, sports cars and motorcyclists um, dodging our van. But um, today I've come to a new location and you can see it's uh, quite overcast and it's starting to rain. The forecast is for it to rain a little bit later on and it's much cooler at this elevation. I'll put the location information on the bottom so you can see where I am. But um, this particular track we walked it this morning and I have to say it was a lot easier without a backpack on. So I'm puffing and panting, it's extremely steep. Trouble is with Switzerland is it's either up or it's down, it's never flat. So wherever you want to go to, it's a real hike. Um, so this particular place I've chosen quite close to where we've been able to park and it's probably about a 20 minute walk to get to where I want to be. And uh, the woodlands here are just outstanding but what I'm, at, what I'm heading for right now is uh, a lovely little meadow. So I'll catch you up when I get there in just a few, just a few minutes. So I'm going to kick this off with a landscape image, not because it's dawn or dust particularly, but because it's a really beautiful scene and compositionally it sits so comfortably together and it, it really gives um, you, the viewers, a um, feel for what the location is like. And um, compositionally all the rules and the technical aspects still matter. Um, but like I said, you know, it's not dawn or dust, but it's a really beautiful scene. So I just wanted to go through this before I, I get stuck into any of the other things that are, well, all the multitude of things that are growing around me. So this is my scene behind me. Absolutely stunning. And um, unlike my normal photography, I've actually included a man-made feature. It's not something I... I do very often at all, but um, I did like the rustic nature of this, um, this hut down here and just our barn and the way it just sits within the landscape. Um, I'll not talk about the composition features just yet. I'll get um, a little video camera on the back of the LCD in just a second. But um, in terms of settings, um, I'm on F16, the 40th of a second and 400 ISO. Occasionally the wind blows, isn't right now and uh, I wanted to freeze uh, all the wildflowers rather than have them moving for this particular shot. Um, I'm doing a focus, focus stack and um, an exposure blend. Not, not a simple image to take, largely because of the time of day really. It's, you've got the bright sky and um, dark foreground and um, lots of depth of field and I want front to back sharpness and it's not that achievable, it's not easy with a medium format lens without stopping right down um, to like f22 and then you're compromising lens quality. So f16 is nice and sharp for me um, for this particular lens. Focal length 32mm. Um, I'm focusing two shots, one on the immediate foreground and the second one on the, the, the apex of the barn, the far gable and um, that, that will, that's more or less near, near enough to infinity um, to give me sharpness right the way through the scene. The background, there's a lot of water in the air, a lot of water dropping between mis myself and the distant mountains. There's, there's, I, don't, I can't tell whether it's haze or whether it's actually rain. So I'm not too worried about the distant sharpness. So the, the, the immediate foreground and the line with the conifers on is what I want to be absolutely critically sharp. So I've got that in those two frames. And then lastly, I've taken a third shot underexposing by about three stops just to bring a bit of detail in the sky. I'm not looking for it to, not, not trying to make it look like it was taken um, sort of at the time of day when everything can be captured in one frame. I'm going to allow the last frame to be a little bit brighter so it, at least it does look real. To, to my eye, there's detail in those clouds, but to the cameras, they can't see that at all. So I'm not going to bring it down so it looks really moody and, and, and atmospheric because that doesn't represent what I'm seeing. Um, I want it to be exactly as I, as I find it today. So I'll put that little video camera on back of here now and I'll just talk you through the composition. So here is the final composition. And to briefly discuss the composition features, you've got the line of trees here, the line of conifers, and you've got the mountainside coming down in the far distance there, and they really draw your eye to that centre point where the little rustic hut is with the uh, corrugated tin roof. Rusty tin roof I might add, which is a nice extra touch. Um, 
the grassy hillside running down this lovely diagonal here really aids the composition and I like the contrast in tones between the dark conifers and the brighter green meadow. In front of the hut, the hut is in a little dip so you've got another um, important line that runs through the frame here and because there's a dip it enables the umbella for flowers to really pick up along that ridge line. Now I know the lighting isn't um, your typical um, landscape lighting but this sort of lighting really does uh, help to pick out all the detail in the foreground flowers. If there's one thing that I'm not keen on on this image and I am going to delete it, it's just here. There's a little signpost that's just telling people not to walk any further into the meadow. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's not, um, and it's not adding anything to the value of the image. So I am going to just remove that. So I'll put that image on now. It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be this because whilst the meadow is full of a multitude of, of wildflowers, even though the signpost stops you going beyond a certain point, it's just something that doesn't sit comfortably with me about wandering in amongst all this beauty. It just doesn't feel right. So I'm, I'm right on the edge um, of, the, of the meadow and uh, just enjoying it from afar more or less and just pick, going to pick off what I can from the edges. Now I've been photographing this, this is quite remarkable because in my last video, was it my last video? I'm sure it was maybe the one before, I photographed cow parsley and, and here we have it again in Switzerland but obviously all the cow parsley in the UK has gone over but because we're higher here I think this elevation is roughly about the height of um, Ben Nevis, it's about 1500 metres, something like that where we are and the cow parsley is here flowering once again, so um, tried and tested method. Um, you've seen me do it before, holding the camera underneath and um, sort of building on the abstract theme um, of the last image that you that, that I took of the oxide daisies. But this time, not ICM. It is just literally um, moving the camera around, looking for pleasing compositions um, within the umbella for itself. And there's there's lots of options. You've got the the little um, stems that radiate out, they make nice lines. Um, and, but for this shot, I've used a combination of the flowers and the little stems to try and piece something together that feels like it sits nicely um, in, within the frame. And it's basically, you've got two of the little flower heads, um, which are nice and sharp, or at least I hope so. And then around them, you've got somewhat recognizable parts of the plants around it, just holding it all together. I'm shooting up to the um, to the bright sky, so I've got the camera set on aperture priority, and I'm overexposing by plus two stops, um, 400 ISO, and it's giving me shutter speeds um, in the region of uh, one second, 800th of a second. So that's nice and easy to handhold. Um, 100 mil macro macro lens set on f. Oh, sorry, 120 mil macro lens set on f4, and um, just picking off images as I find them. So I'll put that on now.
So I've found my last shot. It's taken me about half an hour to find this next image and I'll talk about that in just a second, but I've literally moved about well, one and a half meters from my last shot and um, still desperately um, keeping out of the rest of the meadow, even though um, my brain is on overload. It wants to get in there and find all the different plants and photograph them, but having respect for the plants is, is really the, the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. So the crazy thing is, is that I've come all the way to Switzerland, I'm amongst the mountains, and the thing that I've found to photograph is something that grows in the field at the back of my house. It's a simple dandelion, something I photographed just recently in another video. Um, but this is the point I often try to make, is that you don't have to travel to exotic locations to find great images. And um, this is case in point. Um, it's literally two dandelion stems that are um, finished and you've just got the remnants of the seeds on the tops of the dandelion uh, seed head. And a while ago someone made the point, a, a comment that I, I made about things being a little bit uh, messy and cluttered in terms of the plants that I was photographing off. For example, a, um, a toadstool which had been eaten by slugs and they made the point that um, that nature isn't perfect and, and you know you can still photograph it and, and I, I sort of agree to a large extent in, in that regard but the point I'm trying to make is that even with things that, that are, are messy and, and rotting down let's say for example they can still make beautiful images the, there is beauty in decay but you've still got to think about it from an artistic point of view it, it, it's got it's got to tick all those boxes and this for me does just that you've got a dead um, finished dandelion and all the seed heads have virtually um, disappeared and you've just got a few scattered about but um, when I've lined it up with the camera to me it looks really beautiful you've got one um, dandelion head just set below the other and I've been very careful to arrange the camera sensor back so that it's parallel to both the tops of the seed heads so that I can get those nice and sharp. I want to shoot with my aperture wide open to, to, so I can get the fall off effect and I don't get all the grasses in the background coming into sharp focus. I want lovely soft, softness behind so it's crucial that I get those two heads nice and sharp for this particular image because I want to include both of them and you need something sharp within the image to really focus upon and that's what I've done with those two heads there. Now, um, like I said, I've shot at f4, I'm at 100 ISO and I've underexposed by one stop um, just, just to make sure that I don't burn out the white portions of the, um, of, of the plant because the background is quite dark so it's bringing the exposure in um, perfectly throughout the scene. Um, what I have done, um, I've craftily uh, moved one of the plants in front of the, the image because if you watch my, my channel regularly you'll know that I don't like stems just abruptly interrupting the bottom of the frame. I prefer a softness and uh, that's not always achievable as, as, is, as is the case here. I shoot through vegetation to get that softness at the base of the, the image. So what I've done here, I've actually got this meadow cranes bill and I've just bent it so that and brought it forward so that the camera shoots through it but doesn't really see it and it creates a softening effect where the stems are at the bottom and what I did was I just got hold of it looked through the camera and just moved it into place and when I found it a nice position for it such as that I just triggered the shutter um, I'm on manual exposure I'm not on aperture priority because I've been able to get the tripod in nice and easily on this, this occasion. So manual exposure, got everything set up perfectly and it was just a case of bringing that into where I wanted it to be and, uh, and just triggering the shutter. Interestingly, I could also use the coloured flowers, but for me, I felt that that, that purple or, um, yeah, it's a purpley sort of colour, didn't really lend itself to the image. It's nice to just keep the colours nice and simple on, on this particular occasion. So I'll put that shot on now.
thank you all so much for watching today's video. Images to come in just a second. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to press the like button. And if you want to see more, you can always subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing to do that. Leave some comments, let me know what you think of today's images and if you want to support the channel more you can always become a member. You can do that by joining YouTube or Patreon for as little as 99 pence per month. So until next time, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.